Hey, I'm going to give some advice to any aspiring writers out there. If your character ever unironically says the word baller and is not immediately punched in the windpipe, throw out that draft. Now, I know, Heroes is probably a good show. I just don't care. Anyway, let me back up a bit to explain what I'm on about. In 2016, Phosphor Studios shout out Gemini Heroes Reborn, a first-person shooter created based off of a comic book slash TV show of the same name that some people liked enough to create a spinoff. But that's not saying much, is it? Shaq Boo had enough fucking people to warrant a spinoff, and at least that was well-written enough to be funny. And it's not like these projects are doomed anymore. Tying your game to corporate obligation is a lot like herpes. Sometimes it's barely noticeable, and other times it just blends in with the other warts that were already there. Which one is Heroes Gemini? We'll take a look at the fucking title, genius. You know damn well where this is going. And it's not like this was going to be a blockbuster. I don't think anyone even really cared enough to talk about it when it released, but unfortunately, they never expected anyone as petty as me to dig it out of the trash. The game opens with Cassandra and her gym bro pal Alex breaking into a secret government facility because somehow this will help her find her long-lost parents. Also, superpowers exist. I'm not willing to watch the whole show, so I'll just take the game's word for it. And during this brief moment, the game's first warp becomes apparent. The writing. You see, I'm one of those poor fucks that only gets deemed a millennial depending on who you ask, so I'm not sure if I'm supposed to hate these characters characters because they represent me, or hate them because in a few years they'll represent the youth that resents me. But as it stands, these characters are about one radicalized tweet away from listening to Simpsons wave. Even keeps track of your vitals. Whoa. Voice to text conversation. So baller. You like it? Every bit of dialogue is like this. They're terribly voiced, but also just uncomfortably written. It creates this effect as if the voice actress just didn't know what feeling to express when she was in the recording booth. I guess it's, we're it's doing this! The You'll need to time it perfectly. And then you realize how off-putting the tone is when you start playing the game because this shit has some of the most violent ways to dispatch enemies I've ever fucking seen. Hello. Do you want to play the game? Oh yes, I didn't choose to talk about this because it was some bottom of the barrel trash that I thought I could make fun of for easy clout. There's actually a spark of unique glitter mixed into that garbage. Cassandra has no traditional means of attacking enemies. She can only use her quote unquote evil abilities, meaning that you need to pick items up to throw at enemies, smash them into environmental hazard, deflect bullets, or slow down time to catch the bullets and throw them back. You see, what all I just described there sounds pretty fucking bomb, right? No, no it isn't. Games like Infamous and Bioshock know that giving you a creative tool set to deal with enemies can be fun, especially when you're challenged to think fast. But that's the key part, thinking fast. Heroes is not fast, it's slow unbearably slow. And that boils down to a lot of bizarre design decisions. For example, without a melee attack, you have no consistent way of attacking without throwing something. But it's kind of hard to do that when you're being fucking shot at, so the only thing you can do is try to catch the bullets and throw them back. And yet the AI must have been taught at the same schools I was because I've never seen someone act so confused in my life. You can only catch bullets when time is slowed down. Otherwise, they'll just bounce off of your shield, which might dictate a degree of skill, but only if you measure skill in the same manner that I measure self-worth. Enemies aim their guns at you before they fire, but they do so whenever they feel like it. They don't telegraph it much, if at all. So if you're not ready, the bullet bounces off your shield, and it becomes incredibly inconsistent, meaning that the two of you can just fucking stare at each other for long periods of time until they decide to fire at you. Normally, you could just work around this by smashing them over the head with a filing cabinet, but some ways into the game, they start throwing enemies at you that can be only killed with their own bullets. Okay, so you can slow down time. What are the actual new ideas we are getting at? Well, remember how in 2016, games like Dishonored 2 and Titanfall played with those multiple timelines thing for one whole level, and both of them are usually regarded as the best parts of those games? Gemini Heroes does that for the whole game. Cassandra's main power allows her to change between the current day in 2014 and six years prior in 2008. This basically allows you to progress through both the current state of the building and the past before everything got ruined, with what is essentially the press of a button, though what this mainly ends up culminating as is pretty underwhelming. Most of the time, it is a fancy way forward button. If there's a locked door in front of you, just go into a different time period where it's open. So far, so lame. Where this actually gets interesting is when you factor it into combat. When spotted, you can use it to escape sight lines and hide, and then you can peer into the other timeline and decide where to reappear. And this is about as fair as bringing your virgin friend to the local fraternity Smash Brothers tournament. I don't understand why the devs would allow for a mechanic that basically lets you skip the game, 
even when the game decides to show some teeth, it doesn't take much to go back to the future and suck your thumb until your patented regenerating health fixes you up. Obviously, this does as much for pacing as using a nail to hammer in another nail, so the only idea the devs came up with to keep combat interesting was to constantly fill one timeline with excess garbage and rubble to prevent you from warping there. Great, instead of working on your central mechanic, you just decide to put a towel over it. Smart. Most games would try to fix this by spawning enemies in both timelines, but for some reason this very obvious solution just never fucking gets used. This also brings back the tone issues we talked about because Cassandra treats her newfound mastery over time and space the same way a high schooler would casually brag about getting her driving license. I went back in time. <laughs> yeah, right. I told you, I have evil abilities. Oh, just waiting for the bell to ring. I want to get out of here ASAP before all the after school traffic, so keep up already. Yeah, I just got my license. Hell, she as a person is mostly reactionary, and her levels of determination wildly fluctuate depending on how desperately the devs need the game to fucking end. Did you find what I need, Cassandra? I don't give a damn what you need. Fine. Deal. Where is it? Jimbro over here spends most of the game calling you on Skype next to his armed captors, so obviously he's going to betray you in the same fashion one would embarrassingly admit a crush during an active shooting. The boss fight with him revolves around a new blast attack that you get, but for the most part, you're waiting for your max pain bullet time to recharge because you can't approach him without it. And I don't mean that you'll get hit, I mean the game literally puts a wind box around him that only goes away during that ability. Then there's Dahlia, your long lost sister, and the thing that is hilarious about her is that Cassandra basically asks her to fix the story for her, and she disappears and is never seen again. Mason is a man of science that does evil things because he likes science, and that's about it. Like, we don't really have a reason to hate him. To be honest, I don't even know why he tries to kill you in the first place. It seems like you could have pretty easily have fooled Cassandra with a brand new iPhone and a copy of A Sound of Thunder. That's not even to actually say what this does to the world of heroes. I mean, I'm not a quantum physicist, but I know damn well the time paradoxes are a thing. Like, the big reveal at the end of the game is that Cassandra was the one behind the explosion that destroyed the facility back in 2008. But you're exploring a destroyed version of the city before that even happens. That's not even to mention all of the security detail that you kill in the past. Cassandra should have warped back into a time period ran by the fucking apes at the point she was screwing with God's plan. I don't even want to think about this anymore. It's turning my brain into white noise. I think the point where everything wrong with this game comes to a singularity is when you finally actually face Mason in a final boss battle. Mason stands around throwing fireballs and charging at you. And at first, it feels like there's no reason you can't just beat him with the good old psychic blast bullet time WWE chair combination that worked on everyone else, but I guess I'm Immunity to pain is just what happens when you have to read your own script. So in order to defeat him, you have to bring him to the past where Cassandra blows up the facility and metaphorically steps on the butterfly. You do this by tricking him into destroying the generators that power the facility, and this is where things get fucky. You see, Mason's diet must consist of drywall, lean cuisine, Georgie's vodka, and more drywall because the amount of brain damage on display here is enough to warrant a down the rabbit hole video. You think you can trick me into destroying all I have built? It also brings back the age-old problem the rest of the combat has, where you need to wait for him to shoot you first in order to catch the fireballs, but Mason also seems to lack object permanence because he loses you all the time. Or sometimes you just get stuck and you have to blast his AI into working properly. Also, appropriately enough, you can still suck out the tension of the fight by leaping into 2014, doing a bit of reading, and then hopping back into the fray. It's mind-numbingly stupid, and you aren't even treated to a satisfying ending as a result. Mason hurts himself, Cassandra delivers one of the dumbest one-liners ever. It was you all along. You're the one who destroyed the quarry. Hey, Mason. Karma's a bitch. <laughs> Afterwards, you are invited to a brief escape sequence before being treated to a very shitty monologue where in which you sit on a cliff and it's pretty much an ordeal of the adventure continues, and that's it. I wasn't expecting something good, but the least you could have done is not have ended it exactly where we fucking started. That'd be like watching a YouTube video for a long time just for it to cut to black and play tasteful music. 
Fuck you. Don't act like you know me. This is a small bit I wanted to add at the end because I googled the game developers, Phosphor Studios, and apparently this was a part of some 10 year quest to make the ultimate superhero game, and that's just fucking sad. And I know I'm picking on something that wasn't even charging full price, but as my pastor used to say, $30 is $30. To be honest, I'm mostly picking on it because the official Twitter account barely even mentions it, like at all. You have to scroll down for a very long time to even hear them admit that this game happened, to the point where I even started to suspect I had the wrong studio. On the bright side, the head of the company is followed by Andrew Yang, so make a joke about that at your own expense. Anyway, now cut to black.